In this tutorial, I want to talk about one of the most powerful professional features of HDR Expose 3, and that's the ability to do batch processing. This is a great tool for anybody who shoots lots of photos on a location. We're going to start by clicking on the batch processing button, but we can also access the same feature up here in the file menu. So here I've opened the folder that contains all the images that I want to work on. Now, batch processing consists of two steps. The first step is batch merge. That's when we're going to take all of these raw files and convert these into 32-bit HDR images. The second step is called batch processing, and that's where we'll take the 32-bit images here as input and apply various presets to process them for final low dynamic range output. Let's take a look at how this works. Now the first thing you'll notice is that this window looks very familiar to the one that you see in the single image merge dialog. So you have all of your individual RAW files selected here. Again, you have the auto stack images slider. Uh, in case the images haven't grouped together properly, you can adjust that to make them all line up. You have the, uh, the button here to choose the directory that you want to work with. Then you have the source filter. Again, it's very important. You can only merge images of the same file type. So you can choose here to merge JPEG images, TIFF images, or RAW files. As I mentioned, the first step is the batch merge process. So here I'm going to select the folder that I want my 32-bit images to be stored in and how I want to name them. So I'm going to go up to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder called Fort Point Batch Test. Great. And then I'll choose that folder. I'm going to choose the BEF file format for the 32-bit image. It's the Unified Colors proprietary format that's most optimized for HDR. If you're working in another environment or other applications that use OpenEXR or Radiance HDR files, you can select them here as well. If you really need to, you can also select a 32-bit TIFF file, which is the largest 32-bit uh, file format. We're going to go with BEF. Keep it simple. Under this pull-down menu, I can choose to use the name of the first file in the batch to create the name for the 32-bit TIFF file, or I can go in and select a custom name, and then I would type that in here. Since I've already named the files, I'm going to just select this option, and again, this will pull the first image out of the set and use that name in order to name the 32-bit TIFF file. I can also set an incremental counter to add to the file name. I can click on the reset button to set that back to one, and I'll do that. I also have the checkbox here to merge static photos. We discussed this functionality in greater detail in the merge and alignment tutorials, if you want to go back and revisit that there. There's one more option here that says process to final. I'm going to leave that for now and explain what that does uh, a little bit later on. So my settings are, are all defined here. Now let's go back and look at the images that we're going to work on here. If I hover over the thumbnail, you'll see the relevant metadata for that image. If I have an individual image that I want to exclude from the batch process, I can just click on the X box and make it go away. Now I'm not deleting that image at all, I'm just removing it from the batch command. If I've clicked on that by mistake and actually want to include that image in my batch, I can click on the refresh button and that'll reload the page and you'll see all the thumbnails come back again. If I would decide that I don't want to include this image at all, I can double click on it to select it, hit the delete button, and then that'll go away. Again, I'm not deleting the original files, I'm just removing it from the batch command here. So let's say I want to work on these four images. When I'm happy with all the settings and have my output settings defined, I'm going to click OK, and it's going to go to the batch task manager. And here you can view the progress of the batch job as it's being processed. So while the batch is running in the background, I can either go uh, take a break, uh, have dinner, uh, make some phone calls, or actually use the software to process other pictures. This is a real advantage for photographers who shoot a lot on, the, on location and come back and have a lot of HDR processing to do. So let's go back to our batch log to check our progress. I can go up to View and click on the Show Batch Tasks line. And now you can see that these four images have been successfully merged. And I have four new files, four new BEF files that I've created in that output folder. 
And now we're going to do the batch processing step. So now I'm going to go back and select the new folder that I created, the Fort Point Batch Test. And I'm going to change my source filter to show me the BEF files. And you'll see these four images here. So the next thing I want to do is select the preset that I want to use to process these images. These are the same presets that you've seen and used inside the main application. This is the list of ones that we supply. If you've created any custom presets, then those will also appear in this list. Now another interesting feature for anybody working in batch mode is the ability to add multiple presets. So I can add up to five different presets for each image. So I could select the tone map linear as one. I could select to have one that has increased midtones. Maybe I'll do the optimal preset. And then finally, maybe I want a increased contrast black and white version of that same image. As I said, you can have up to five different presets. And what this will do is process each image with each one of these different presets and provide separate files. So I have four different images and five different presets, which will result in 20 different output images. Again, here I can select the type of file that I want, JPEG, 8-bit TIFF, or 16-bit TIFF. In this case, I'll make JPEGs. And I'll also apply the sRGB profile to that. And then I'm going to choose a new folder where I want these output files to be saved. I'll create a new folder, and I'll call this one Fort Point JPEGs. And then I'll choose this and say OK. And now the batch task dialog comes up again, and it's going to go through and create the JPEGs from these. And once this is done, we'll come over and take a look at them as well. OK, let's take a look at the batch task manager again and see how we're doing. OK, you can see now that all of the images have been completed. Let's go to that folder and check out the results. So as you can see, I have five different versions of each file now, and each one of these images is stored here. And that's how you would do the batch processing in a two-step process. First, merge, and then process applying your presets to the 32-bit images. Now there's one last thing that I wanted to point out here, and that is the merge to final option. If you're in a real rush, you can select that and do all of this in one batch step. By choosing this, you see that both panels are open. And now you can select the presets that you want to use. And you can do the whole batch process in one step. So it'll start with the original RAW files. It'll then merge them into 32-bit files, in this case the BEF file. And then finally here, apply your favorite presets to create the TIFF or JPEG output that you want. So when you say OK now, it's going to go through the whole pipeline from front to end and do everything for you automatically. And that's the real power of the batch processing tool. Thanks for watching.